When did you? Uh, tonight. You? Yesterday. So you were kidnapped too? Yeah. Daniela was killed right in front of me. There. Other Daniel. Me too. Will you take back to Velocity? Beaten? A man to help me escape. Say. Say. I guess this was inevitable, right? The different versions of us would spawn in the box. How many? I know some of them must have been killed. Or lost. Or ran out of ampules. But some of them, like you and like me, made the right choices. The right choices. Or got lucky. Our paths may have been altered by different doors and different worlds, but eventually they made their way back to this Chicago. Every choice I made in there created a different Jason. Every choice those Jasons made and those Jasons Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And sorry for the delay in a lot of these episodes, but we are finally back and we are continuing our journey with Dark Matter. But in this particular spoiler for a podcast, but honestly, it can't be too much spoilery for the fact that a lot of people have had enough time to see episodes seven and eight. (laughs) <laughs> and, and nine just dropped so they probably watched nine already as well exactly so. <laughs> so but we'll do nine next week but you'll have this to uh listen to in the meantime so if you're listening to this for the first time and you waited all that time this is fresh and new to you but it's a spoiler full just to talk about these two episodes seven and eight of dark matter 2024 Not to be confused with the other series years ago, but we're doing seven and eight. So episode seven is entitled In the Fire of Dead Stars, and episode eight is entitled Jupiter. Episode seven's synopsis that Jason and Amanda visit a breathtaking world to hide the truth from Daniela. Jason, too, takes a desperate vacation. (laughs) (laughs) Takes desperate action. Wait, you said that. You flowed into that weirdly. It's it's two separate statements. Jason and Amanda visit a breathtaking world, period. To hide the truth from Daniela, Jason, too, takes desperate action. Yeah, but he should take a desperate vacation. I, he does I, desperate, I, yeah, I think I, I think I <laughs> imposed my own thoughts of what I need at the moment, which is really a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and episode eight, its synopsis is panicked and cornered. Jason, who tells Daniela and Charlie, they need to leave town immediately. <laughs> that's the that's the the least of their worries at this point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we we're gonna probably flow into these episodes, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, bear with us. Uh, my thoughts about uh, seven seven was interesting. Gave us a little light into a few things, uh, mostly about Amanda. And her conversations with Jason one, uh, we get to see her trying to settle down on a place, taking Blair's, uh, her suggestion from that world saying, you know, you're running out of ampules. There's only so many that you could jump to. How are you ever really going to find your original world to go back to at that point? You should find yourself someplace where you need to be to live out your life that you're going to be happy with. And it's going to be the same world, obviously, but it's just a bit different than her original. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Episode seven was really, really good because episode seven really closes, kind of closes out Amanda's storyline for us, you know, gets us, uh, gets us moving forward into the, into the next, the next episodes and into the, the, uh, the rest of the season. And, you know, she finds a world that is really uh, most of us would, would term, you know, a pretty idyllic, world really i mean they've got cold fusion because there's that whole cold fusion celebration day that they're having and you know she's it's a world where her her version of herself is either i don't remember 
is either missing or presumed dead or not. It was weird because she said on in one on one hand, she said, well, she's missing, but she has really good credit. And so she was able to get money and she's going to be able to travel to another part of the country and mm-hmm. set up a new life. You know, so I, I, I got the impression that the Amanda there, um, it was, it was almost perfectly set up for her to not necessarily take over that Amanda's spot, but at least come in, get some money from that Amanda's whatever holdings, and then create a new life for herself. And, and obviously she asked Jason to stay with her and uh, Jason chooses not to, which leads me to one of the biggest revelations I had after we finished recording the last episode we recorded, I went and watched episode seven again. Mm-hmm. And at the end of it, I, I realized I started thinking about the fact, I said, wait a minute, he's making the choice to not go with her. That means that there's, there's going to be a Jason out there. That's there's going to be a universe created with a Jason and Amanda where he did choose to go with her. Cause remember hmm. every choice, every choice is made. And that's what we find out in episode eight. When we talk about the multiple Jason's. And so that's what I started thinking after, before I even watched episode eight, uh, when I started, as I was mulling over episode seven last week, um, mm-hmm. I really started thinking about the fact that I was like, wait a minute, there's multiple Jason's there's multiple versions of, the Jason we know as Jason one mm-hmm. now out there because every time he and Amanda made a decision, obviously a new, a new timeline, a new universe was created where a different decision was made. Yeah. And that's the Jason that remembers, you know, saying? like, so it suddenly comes astronomical, mm-hmm. um, the, the different uh, ch- choices that are out there and the different, different versions that could be available. And that's what we find out when we get to, when we get to eight, we'll talk more about that but uh yeah. but yeah that was the biggest thing for me the revelation uh at the end of, of episode seven of realizing that wait a minute there's multiple versions of who we think of as jason one out there yes um, and i guess i guess that the same counterpoint would be there's probably multiple versions of jason two out there as well because he's created even with the decisions that he's made you know he's created different different yes. outcomes and different versions and different different things so it's 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 it boggles the mind. It, it becomes, <laughs> you could go cross-eyed with this and it all yeah. amounts to like the intro of the show. If you look at it with, it looks like an Escher painting with mm-hmm. them walking around on a puzzle building constantly interlocking or in very similar ways. Uh, like you said, there are multiple versions of um, uh, there's definitely another, and that could be another season unto itself where we do see Jason take off with that uh, version possibly of Amanda and then them going on, you know, I, I hate saying a doctor who kind of world where they go into different uh, worlds again to find the right place. Maybe they find other ampules or things of that nature. Yeah. There's, there's lots of possibilities out there that, that, that we could, that we could get that they, they could decide to go with, you know, um, you know, they could track all these other Jasons that, you know, we could track another version of Jason that, you, you know, that, um, well, that's in episode eight, but, you know, we could, we could, season two could track another version of Jason one, take a, a moment where, you know, something else they did diverged and diverge. And we have that couple going off, like you said, into kind of Doctor Who kind of situations. And we find out what, and we just, and it all leads back to, everybody meeting at, at this Chicago at this timeline or, well, I guess it wouldn't because time is still progressing forward. So I yeah. don't know. It's, it's, there's a, there's a multiple, there's myriad of possibilities they could do. So there is. And yeah. Uh, in this episode, I think uh, Jason two scares a little bit of the Amanda one, the therapist. <laughs> yeah. A little bit, a little bit, I think, cause he, he knows way too much about her and, and, uh, and, and who she is and what, you know, and kind of knows more about her than he should. And she's like, Oh, I need you to leave now. Cause you obviously know way more about me than you should. And yeah. suddenly the doctor patient, uh, uh, relationship has become skewed. So, yeah, yeah. That was a little interesting that to see if that, if they show us that Amanda again or not, I don't know. Uh, we might be, we might be done with the, with psychiatrist Amanda I and think so. Jason too yeah. um, at this point. I think that was probably the last. I think this was like the last that we ever see of Amanda. I don't know why, but 
It's my I, feeling. You know, they've closed out her story on, on in multiple timelines. They've closed out her story. Yeah. You know, um, so I, I don't see us I don't really see us going any more forward with but maybe you never know i i'm i'm not digging my heels on anything with this show anymore so <laughs> uh, you know because anything could happen yeah well anything could happen like jason one looking at a mask and thinking and pondering what he might do like jason two mm-hmm. did with him so yeah. he could have been another jason two at one point but he yeah. doesn't he kind of yeah. walks away I, I did like i did like the whole thing at the end when he tries to buy a firearm and he's not able to um, <laughs> yeah. because he doesn't have all the proper paperwork and stuff because Illinois has, has Illinois and Chicago in, in particular has some really specific gun laws. And so yeah. I, I, I was, I was glad that the show didn't kind of go that route of, of, of having him purchase a gun. But, uh, uh, but yeah, so that was, that was an interesting, the, the only thing that, that I took, I, I, I came away from that, that final scene there. And I was kind of like, like, wait a minute, why are they wearing the same clothes? And why does he just happen to have the same backpack? Yes. Because that, that really, that kind of made me go, wait a minute. Okay. I guess they think alike and yes, he does have the same clothes. And so I, okay. Yeah. There's a possibility that they could have, but right at the coincidence of them to be dressed exactly the same at exactly that same time when they walk into the same store, yeah, is a little bit. I mean, come on, that that was not necessary for the show, unless the way they filmed it was they didn't even change his clothes. You know, like if they filmed it right at the same time. I don't know. It just seemed weird to me that they would be dressed exactly the same. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, something for episode eight we'll get into. It is something like because you you see identical people looking dressed identically, so they look like twins. So they're you would- close, but not exactly. I mean, there's some that are are closer than others, but yeah, I get you. I guess there is there. We can we can just we can we can let that go uh, to a certain extent because they they do think alike. They they would dress alike, and and like in in episode eight, he does say something to Daniela about when he's asking her where to meet. Mm-hmm. You know, he says, well, you've got to pick it because he'll think of where I would think of. So, OK, I, I'll give him a little bit of grace on the, the <laughs> clothing of them of wearing very similar type clothing. But um, eh, it just was a little bit. Uh, one one thing I found funny is like Jason to finding another Ryan to plant him. In wasn't Ryan's that interesting, apartment. too? And unfortunately, <laughs> and he finds it. But, he, you know, and I, I realized this after I watched it, particularly episode seven, the second time he <laughs> had to find a Ryan that had no clue who Jason was. He had to. And, and it probably took him a few tries. Correct. He had to find he had to find a Ryan that diverged before they met in college. So that's why it's so important that when Ryan tells him that story about how he got that DUI, mm-hmm. you know, before college, uh, or the one Ryan tells him the story about, you know, the, the one uh, the the Ryan two tells the story about how he got that DUI, uh, and that's what derailed him going to college, or that, or he or he almost got it, or the other guy got a DUI, and that's what it. And so he had to find a Ryan that didn't go to college with Jason. And Correct. that's what he what he did when he found Ryan the mechanic. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was I thought that was really cool. And and especially at the end, it it does it does boggle the mind a little bit that he's he's able to kidnap this guy, get him drunk enough uh to get him into the box, bring him, bring him home, cut his hair. Wash him and then dress him in Ryan one's clothes, basically clothing and dump him, you know, wherever he dumped him so that he could be found again, Yeah, you know, and, and then, uh, and then it, it becomes that he fell off the wagon, you know? So I thought uh, it was really clever what he did, but it, it took you, I realized, I wonder how much, how much ampules that took and how many tries that took for him to find the perfect Ryan. Yeah, you know, to, well, to, also, my my feeling about the whole ampule thing. Find another planet that, or another dimension, not planet. Sorry, <laughs> and and just find a section where Jason, one that particular Jason made like a hundred, and then take them with you and steal and well, just rob yeah, them. Yeah, well, no, and he's got that because if you remember in episode eight, and we'll get when we we're, we're I, I think we're pretty close to moving to episode eight here. When he gets to when when yeah. Daniela goes into the storage unit in episode eight, she finds a whole nother box of ampules 
in yeah. there in the storage unit. So he's got there's no telling how many ampules Jason two has. Mm-hmm. So he can do this as much as he I I would I wouldn't be surprised because like we we talked about he's been you know he was missing from his universe for a year. So he's been planning this for a long, long like we talked time. about earlier, yeah. earlier in recording. He's been planning this for a long time and getting ready for this. So I think yeah. he's had plenty of ampules uh, at this point to where um, he can do whatever he wants. Now, of course, uh, he didn't anticipate that he was going to seal up the box. Of course, he didn't anticipate he was going to seal up the box. And then one episode later, break open the box. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> uh, he ends up not having a choice. But uh, uh but yeah, so yeah, it's episode seven. That's an interesting, like I said, the way it ended with re- with us realizing that Jason one has made it back to his universe mm-hmm. uh, as near as we can tell his universe, yep. or at least close enough to his universe that uh, that it's it's where he's going to settle on because it's his last ampule, you yes. know. And uh, and it's interesting that you know Amanda makes that statement to where when she leaves him, she says maybe it's leaving me. Maybe it's me leaving you that's going to give you the push to be to maybe I'm what, what yeah, yeah maybe I I've, I've what's been holding you back huh. from getting to your universe because you've been with me you haven't been able to take that final step and you know we get it we get an indication of that and this is going again this is going into episode eight when he meets the I'm going to call him Knit Cap Jason when he meets Knit <laughs> Cap Jason uh, in the bar and, and he lifts up his his cap and he's got that scar. On his mm-hmm. head, you yes. know, and he says, well, I lost her. I, and he says, well, when did you get here? He says, yesterday. And he says, well, because I lost her. And you realize that this Jason, again, the same thing had to happen. They had to lose Amanda. In order to get in, there. In whatever way, in whatever, yeah, in whatever fashion they lost her in. But that's how, that was the final step to get them to their quote unquote universe. Because. Yeah. And again, I'm getting into. I'm. I mean, are you good with that? I'm good with that. Into I just found episode it, eight, or yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, we're pretty much towards. We were at the end anyway. My mm-hmm. my feeling was about the episode is that, uh, you know, he found it so soon. They could have dragged this out for seasons of different. If they need could be. have, they could have, and and oh, and another one going back to episode seven, but I'm glad they didn't because going back to episode seven, you know, he found that world and you mentioned the world where he sees the mask is also the world where he finds that Max is alive. Yes. You know, that he finds out that, Hey, there's a world out there where our other son, where both twins survived, both Charlie and Max are alive. And suddenly he, that's when I think that's for Jason one, that's where he got the, another another not the final final push because i still think losing amanda was what gave him the real push uh to get to his world but but realizing seeing that there are other worlds out there that are peaceful for him but realizing he he got to see he had that moment of where i think he thought about i could take this this yeah, Jason's life. yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I could take this Jason's life, but then he realized that, wait a minute, that's exactly what he did to me. He took my life. I don't, Correct. I'm not going to yeah. take someone else's life. And so yeah. that's when he, and like I said, that's, I think again, and maybe that's even more so than losing a man. And now that I say it out loud, maybe that having that realization of, I'm not going to take someone else's life. I'm not going to take some other Jason's life. That was the really the final push that got his himself centered to where he get back to his real universe. Yeah. His consciousness uh, didn't get skewed or his morality Mm -hmm. or, or how he feels about everything that's happened to him. He doesn't want to impose that onto somebody else, which is smart. Right. Right. Um, So then, so getting into, go ahead. Uh, No, I was going to ask if you had any quotes, but not from episode seven. I think I've, I've said the, the, the few that I could remember from episode seven and, uh, Okay. Well, we could go right into eight. Um, yeah, and I think that's it's important to note what what uh, Knit Cap or what Scar Jason, whatever we want to call him, says is, is he he you know because they both sat down in that booth and he says we're both referring to this guy, the guy who's here as Jason two. That means we all think of ourselves as Jason one, 
And that means that that's the, so the Jason one, the Jason that we knew from the first episode. Correct. Okay. Um, that's the Jason that has skewed off to probably the majority of the ones that we're going to see. And yes. uh, in my watch tonight, so the count in my head now, at least, and I could be off. We've got Jason one. We've got Jason two. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, unconscious Jason in the garage. Yes. We've got um, uh, Hotel Jason, who may also be baseball cap Jason. <laughs> Maybe might be the same guy. So that's four. Yeah. Um, but then we've got knit cap Jason with the scar. That's five. Okay. And then we've got car thief Jason, the guy who picks up Danielle and he's got the screwdriver in the yep. the ignition of the car. So yeah, that's at least you know six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's at least six uh, Jasons, four of which are skewed off from the Jason who we think of as Jason one. So yeah. that's at least that's at least six Jasons that made it all back to this universe. I think there's you know. more. Oh, I'm sure there's got to be more. I'm I'm sure there is. But it's just it might count. That's six that I know of for sure. Well, wow. and, oh, and, and let me take that back. We don't know. We don't know if the guy that Jason two beats up in the bathroom at the library, he had a knit cap on, but we don't necessarily know that that's bar knit cap scar Jason. Yeah. Because remember that guy said he had a gun and I never saw a gun from that guy. Mm. Um, it, what didn't he, he told him that in, in the, in the bar, right? He says, you weren't able to get a gun. I was able to get a gun. Yes. Uh, or, yeah, or, he does. yeah. And so, so, so that, that could be, there could be another one, so that could be that could be up to seven, um, probably more Jasons running around. Now, who knows? Next season may just be the Jason hunt. Of you know, let's let's try to make sure we get all the Jasons. We're hunting Jason. It's it's yeah. a reverse Friday the Thirteenth, people. All no, the Jasons <laughs> that are in that are in this universe because they think it's their universe because yeah. it's so close to their universe. Yeah, it, it's funny that you brought up the whole uh, wearing wool caps and everything. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I, I had, had to admit to Steve because we haven't recorded in a while. I only got to watch this a couple of times, but didn't go into thorough details. But I used uh, a, a specific. It was like a TVFanatic.com, and they do their kind of reviews. But I like to refresh my my thoughts and everything. But the way they put it in here, and I have to use it. It says Jason ones wearing wool caps as they here on all the other Jasons, they could be the red shirts of the series. <laughs> <laughs> and I like yeah, that. It's a good evaluation of it because they could be dead at the end. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Uh, you know, although uh car thief Jason didn't have a wool cap on. Yeah. So that um, is true. <laughs> but, but uh <laughs> then then there's uh we were talking about before about how there's multiple of them, but yeah, they have that uh, like the conversation in the bar uh, about the gun, they they have mm-hmm. this like this whole interaction of like where they been, who they talked to, who they were with, how they get there, and you know at the tap and Matt the bartender who knows Jason there mm-hmm. sees two Jason sitting there and having a drink together. Yeah, Doesn't- I don't know why he didn't acknowledge. And like when he sees the one Jason get up who's wearing a different coat and wearing a knit cap walk out of the bar he doesn't even acknowledge that he sees him walk out of the bar yeah because he, he walks right past him he's cleaning glasses at the bar when jason knit cap it's, jason walks well, past him yeah. you know now he did i mean he does say there is a moment there so the 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 assumption i got from that scene was that jason knit cap jason um uh, ordered a beer mm-hmm. from the and then went and sat down and sat down in the booth and was sitting down in the booth for however long and then Jason one, our Jason, the Jason that we know of as Jason one comes in. Now, yeah. granted, he's wearing different clothes, which I, I can, you know, most, most people I don't think are going to be as um, uh, observational to notice that this guy's wearing different clothes, but he orders another drink and yes. the bartender says, what? So soon. And he's like, uh yeah and he's like we well, want the same thing sure give me the same thing and so he gives him a beer and he walks and then that's when he turns around when jason one turns around and sees jason knit cap jason sitting in the in the booth so i i'm i'm assuming the booth is far enough away from 
the bartender area that he didn't see. Yeah, the guy Jason. Sneak in. That, yeah. yeah, that Jason. Well, no, not the, the, the that that guy was there. That he was already there, yeah. sitting down in the booth. And so, but it's still when when he leaves, you know, like when he gets it to leave, he walks right past the bartender, and the bartender doesn't say anything about, "Hey, bye, Jason." And then, you know, what a few seconds later, or, or maybe a minute, less than a minute, definitely later, Jason one gets up and walks out. Also, you would think he would go, "Hey." You, you just think, left. just <laughs> give us a brief just give us a brief shot of him going waiting huh? like a second time and kind of going deja vu, <laughs> you know. And but yeah, they didn't do that for us. So yeah, a little bit, but you know, it is it's a bar. It didn't look it was super busy, but it might have been busy, just busy enough that I I can I can give the bartender a little bit of grace and go okay. Yeah. He didn't he didn't realize what was going on there, but still, you know, I mean the 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 gun the gun counter lady, um. I totally get because she's probably part of her job is she needs to be ob- observational and she needs yeah. to pay attention to people when they're in there and what they look like. Because if they do some shenanigans or something happens wrong, she's going to be the one who's liable. True. You know? So the fact that she goes, well, do you have a twin brother? Because you just had a, a somebody who looked just like you was in here, you know, <laughs> um, so I, I get that. But uh, uh, I can give the bartender a little bit of grace on that. But but still, I loved I, I loved his little ploy with the cigar. Um, and I didn't figure out what he was doing until, uh, you know, until she comes into the police station or until he gets arrested. It might have been oh, when he got arrested. Yes. When he got arrested, that might have been the moment when I realized that, oh, he's purposely getting himself arrested yeah. so that he'll be in one place and the other Jason will be in another place. Yep. And Daniela will come, will have to come to the police station for him and he'll be able to, because she's already, you know, she's already talked to mechanic Ryan. And mm-hmm. so she showed him the picture of Jason on her phone. And he said, Oh, yeah, that's the guy who was buying me shots. And so suddenly she's looking at this. And even though, you know, I, I don't know how much Jason has told her about his quantum theory. Over the years, you know, was there at any point in the relationship, did he mention the fact that he was playing around with a theory about multiple universes? I don't know. Uh, th- with this Daniela, we know with the other Daniela, he definitely did because she had it ingrained in her in her memory. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's why she made the art exhibit that she made. And that's why ultimately why she ends up getting shot. But this Daniela, I don't know if she would default to the multiple universe theory. But she still asks him, well, is this the guy who was buying you shots? And he's like, oh, yeah, that's the guy who was buying me shots. And so now her brain has got to be turning over in her head going, okay, I don't understand what this is. You know, and unless you're in a – again, unless you're in a world that has comic books, that has multi (laughs) – unless you're a person who is aware of the multi-universe theory, which, you know, we are. But I would would say like – the population of people that I go to church with, uh, probably half of them know what a multiverse is. Exactly. And and the other half would be, I'd be like trying to explain this concept to them. And they would just look at me like, what? You're losing science, your mind. That's science, science fiction, fiction stuff. Yeah. And I don't, it's not, I don't, just no, not yeah. necessarily just comics. It's in science fiction as well. Right. But it's, it's in science fiction all over the place, but it's, yeah. it's, if you're not, if you're not in that kind of realm, Mindset. yeah, you're not going to pick up on it. So I, and we haven't, there's been no indication that Daniela one Daniela prime, whatever we're yeah. calling her uh, has that kind of mindset, but you know, she's definitely getting there because when she says, wh- what does she ask him? She goes, Oh, you really think you're a mechanic? And he goes, I am a mechanic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, like, cause she's, she says, she says, Oh, it's Daniela. And he goes, Honda civic Daniela. And he's, <laughs> she's like, wait, am I one of your customers? And he's like, yeah, you wear out your brake pads. Like you're, whatever you yeah. know and she's like oh okay he's like loyalty motors you don't remember like he's he's dealing with her like she's a customer of his correct yeah and and she's dealing with him like he's a friend of hers and he doesn't doesn't get it so well, uh yeah, so yeah i think she's <laughs> starting to understand what that is and what's going on there mm-hmm. and uh and so obviously then she's more open to it when jason does you know give her when he breaks breaks the news to her that, Hey, the man you've been living with for the last however many weeks or however months or however long it's been. Um, I don't think we have a really firm grip on the timeline. It can't be very long. I would say weeks Yes, that it's been because Charlie's still in school. 
Yes. So it's not like it's not like he's out of school. So uh, we don't. So it's probably a fairly short timeline. Um, but when he tells her, "Hey, the guy you've been living with for the last whatever three weeks or whatever uh, is not your husband. It's not. It's not the Jason you know." He yeah. took my life and, and she's able to kind of believe that because she saw this Ryan and, uh, but yeah, I, I love the whole, the whole, uh, we've got to have a safe word and it's gotta be something <laughs> you pick. So, and it's gotta be a place you pick and, and that the, the whole bean. Jupiter thing was great. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and also the, uh, interaction with Charlie and well, I think it was Jason too. <laughs> I get confused, mm -hmm. but they yeah. had to go to college because he mm -hmm. said, he goes, you forgot. Oh, forget it. And then he goes, no, 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 no. I'm going to show you. He gets him in mm -hmm. and, you know, they didn't have like a, a reservation or whatever it was to get in to go to go see. And they were able yeah, to they sneak didn't have the in. Visitor pass, but they have to, which is kind of, again, it's another one of those things that, that why does the show show us something and then not explain how somebody else is able to do it? Like mm -hmm. he and Charlie have this whole long conversation with the security guard about, Oh, you don't have a card. You can't, you can't be, you can't buzz in. Um, okay. Well, I can't buzz you in. Do you have a visitor pass? Hey, well, no, we forgot to get a visitor pass. Okay. Well, this time I'll let you in, but you know, you better get a visitor pass next time. And then he lets him through. And then what? Five minutes later, he comes around. Nick Cap, Nick Cap Jason is in the library. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going, how did he get in the library? I'm exactly. Like, I'm like, did he was he able to bluff his way past the guard as well? Hey, I'm alumni. I'm just visiting. Can I just or did he steal somebody's past? Did he sneak in? You know, he, uh, yeah, well, there's a lot of deaths in this, obviously, of a Jason. So <laughs> I, I'm just saying it just it's one of those things that why show us the interaction with a security guard if mm -hmm. you're not gonna explain to us how the other Jason got in. To the light, it just it's 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 sloppy storytelling. It is to me, and and obviously, as podcasters, we're probably looking at it deeper than anybody else is, and and yeah. But I I just it's one of those things. It's just it's the little things like the money thing that we've been yeah. talking about the last last couple of episodes. You know, the same thing. Jason Nick Cap Jason takes money out of this pocket and says, "Oh, I'm paying for these drinks," and then walks away. And I'm like, and when Daniela's in the storage unit, she's looking at different types of money. So we know Jason too has all these different types of money mm -hmm. that that he's got. So, but how are the other Jasons? It just it's one of those. It's it's a it's little weird. nit. It's a little nitpicky thing. Yeah, that that is. It's not huge to the story, but it's just huge enough. That I want to go. And what's going to happen when somebody finds, you know, did he just beat that Jason unconscious? Did he kill him? I think he killed him. But which leads me to think, too, it's like, hold on, especially when you have one Jason in in the jail and mm -hmm. Daniel's picking him up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if there's multiple identical dead bodies popping up around Chicago, don't you think? Yeah. That yeah. would be hard to explain when I, I they don't think he's alive. I don't think he killed. I don't think he killed the one that's in his garage because they do make a point of showing him uh, with the duct tape. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think he killed the one that's in his garage. The guy in the bathroom, though, I don't know. I I mean, I don't know if he killed him or just left him unconscious in the bathroom. So if he left him, if he left him unconscious in the bathroom, mm -hmm. then okay, there's still a chance that he's going to wake up and just walk out on his own. Okay. Yeah. Got it. He still might be discovered depending on how long he's there, whatever. I don't know. Episode nine might reveal more of that. I, 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 I will note that uh, I haven't watched episode nine yet, um, but I will note that I saw on the description on Apple TV, it does say season finale. Yes. Not series uh, finale, not series finale. So that gives me hope that they're, they're at least thinking about a second season, whether they've announced one or not mm -hmm. yet. I don't know. We'll see what the numbers bear out. But uh, uh, yeah, there's a it's this final episode is going to be is going to be something. It's going to be a doozy and I'm going to be uh, <laughs> very happy to watch it uh, pretty quickly after we get off uh, right. recording recording here. So cool. Uh, do you have any quotes on this particular episode or no? Uh, no, again, uh, I've uh, this has been uh, panelers. I I I apologize it's to okay. be such so cloudy. It has been a week for me. Um, I'm not going to go into details. Life happens, you know that. Um, and so uh, I don't have any quotes. Not not past the ones that I've already already kind of said. Mentioned. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I only have two, and I'll. I think they're pretty interesting. Uh, Charlie 
going to Jason too. And that's all I have is two of them from him to Jason too. First one is Charlie saying, Hey, how about a late night deep dish? And then of course, because they're in Chicago, he goes, and Jason too is like, yeah, yeah. You speak my language. Meh. Meaning, okay, they really do have regular good deep dish pizza to Chicago and his <laughs> for those who don't think deep dish, the Chicago, the, those that don't believe Chicago style is a pizza on you. Chicago style <laughs> is a pizza. <laughs> I is. don't care. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, the next one would be Charlie saying regretting is easy. There's nothing you can actually do about it. And then Jason too stating, maybe you'll understand when you get older, meaning that he's already f- yeah, <laughs> trying to change yeah. what he regretted. Yeah, that's an that's an interesting conversation because, you know, Charlie, yeah. Charlie is really starting to key in on this theory of life changing on one little decision. And well, you can't, you can't dwell on this one decision you made that changed your entire life because just, you can't, you can't dwell on it because your entire life is you. And I've said this before for my own life, you are who you are because of the choices you've made. And if yeah. you made different choices, you'd be a different person. Um, regardless of what these shows, regardless of how close you would be to the person you are, you still, I, the choices I've made in my life make me who I am today. And if I made different choices, I would be a different person. Yes. You know, and and that's, uh, uh, you know, Jason, all the Jasons are living that in, in one aspect, you know, particularly Jason one and Jason two have seen that, you know, Jason two saw what that decision to not um, not be with Daniela when she revealed that she was pregnant meant to his, to this life in that, in that universe. And the, and Jason one got to see how that played out in a different universe. Oh, this is how my life would have, could have gone if I hadn't uh, been with Daniela. This is the person I would have become this, this mean spirited, um, you know, full of anger, person so who's dangerous who he and i i really i really take i give daniela a lot of credit for realizing for all the things that have culminated through this season with jason too of realizing that this other jason is the jason that she's spent the, the last 15 years with you know um so I, I i like that awesome yeah well before we close out and go to where people could hear us and where you could send in some sort of feedback. We did get a little bit of feedback, which I'm glad that we did. Yeah. And uh, we got some from our friend Onwen. I'm going to play that now. Okay. Hi, Mark and Steve. It's Anwen calling from New Zealand. Just wanted to give some feedback on Dark Matter. Thank you so much for the podcast. I'm really glad you guys are covering it. I've been listening along. I was super excited to see that this show was being made because I read the book about this time last year and I read it in a day and a half. I could not put it down. It was so gripping. And right after finishing it, I read that the season, the TV series was coming out and I was so excited. Really enjoying it. I do think that they are keeping really quite closely to the feel and the kind of look that I imagined when I read the book. Um, I think they've changed a few bits and pieces with the storyline, um, which they probably had to for a bit more dramatic effect or maybe some more variety with the characters in the book. Um, it really just focuses on the main sort of three characters and not a huge depth with the other ones. Um, but I think it makes for a really good show. The acting is amazing. The pacing is pretty good. Um, I am super excited to finally see that he got back to his proper world. I was starting to get a bit antsy in the last episode or two thinking, come on, we've got to get to the next part of the story. So I can't wait to see what they're going to do with this next part um, and if it varies very much from the book I do feel like it's varied a little bit already just in terms of what um, Jason 2 um, is feeling and planning um, anyway thank you so much for the podcast I will be listening along and have a great day bye awesome. oh that's uh, that was wonderful thank you Anwin uh, I got to meet Anwin on my uh, my big world cruise that I took or not world my my uh, Australian New Zealand cruise that I took a, a few months awesome. back. So I, I got to meet Anwen uh, there in New Zealand and uh, she is just lovely uh, to meet. And that's, that's, that's great to hear um, 
that she read the book and that it's it's it stayed pretty close to the book and that uh, she likes uh, uh, what we're doing and talking about it. So I appreciate hearing that. Uh, uh, that's that's great. Thank you, thank you so much, Emily. And we, I look forward to to seeing. Uh, let us know what your thoughts are on the finale. Uh, let us know on what your thoughts are if they do set it up for a season two, and if we're going to get a season two. Or if there's more in the book, I don't know. Maybe there's more in the book <laughs> that uh, that it goes past where we're at here. I don't know. Um, yeah, awesome. Yeah, and it's great that you sent in feedback. Thank you, Anne. And it was so uh, it was funny too because I got this mixed up. I thought she was sending something for another podcast, and I was like, oh, because I believe Jason from Podcast just sent it to me. <laughs> oh wow! Because <laughs> I guess she didn't realize how to send it. I thought it was funny. I was like, wait, that's great. No, oh. no worries at all. No <laughs> it worries. worked out. Thank you. So yeah, thank yeah. you, Anwen. Uh Glad we will definitely let you guys know when we're doing episode nine. So as soon as I finish with this edit, obviously there will be a post about when we'll be recording. It might not be right away, so you have time. <laughs> and, yeah. But uh, have time. you have other things to look forward to that we'll be covering as well. You know, Snowpiercer is coming out in July. You got. The boys are on, the boys are back in town, but we'll be doing that like as a chunk and then going into uh, briefing over because a lot of things collided. You got Deadpool Wolverine, you got a whole bunch of things for us for panels to fix. There's a lot of stuff coming up and Snowpiercer is a a, a little ways down the road too, I think. Yeah, but we we have some stuff coming up. Yeah. But with that, uh, we could go into some podcast recommendations. So Steve, do you have any? Um, I have the same thing I had last last time, which is strange indeed. But also, I want to uh, encourage people. Uh, the cast of us, which is a podcastica um, podcast, they are doing a rewatch of The Walking Dead. I am uh, following along with them. Is that I missed this week's episode for my my live Steve, but uh, I'll be back on track with them next week. They have just started season three. Mm. They're into the first couple of episodes of season three of The Walking Dead. So if you're interested in that, uh, please uh, check out podcastica. Uh, and the cast of us with a rewatch of The Walking Dead. Cool. Awesome. A lot of people are, uh, you know, that I've been listening to has been on Podcastica. So obviously I've been involved with doing stuff with collaboratively with Podcastica and doing a podcast on Podcastica. So just go to podcastica.com, everybody. <laughs> I can't explain it anymore. But uh, Welcome to the Apocalypse is back. So I don't know if it's. The last episode for the season or if, or I think so yeah the season finale i don't know how so, long of a break they're going to take but yeah the this was the season finale uh for welcome to the apocalypse this week so i highly recommend that one so uh well where can listeners hear us in other places steve well, as I mentioned, you can hear me right here on Panels to Pixels podcast. I will be uh, here uh, as often as I can be with my uh, my, my good friend and co-host uh, there, Mark. And uh, you can hear my voicemails on various other podcasts that we send that I send voicemails to. Awesome. And as always, you could hear me here as well. But you could also hear me on Adrenaline Cinema podcast, where right now it's a collaborative podcast between Adrenaline Cinema podcast and podcast guys. We cover Interview with a Vampire. Now we're coming up on, we're recording this on Friday, June 28th. That's before the season finale of season two of Interview with a Vampire, which we're covering for that particular collaborative podcast. So uh, if you guys are really into Anne Rice and all that stuff, check it out. It's Danny Espinolda and Lara, Willie Swank, and myself. And we had uh, Danny's friend, Billy, on and a listener, Colin, who is uh, Rebecca Fenner. And uh, she's going to be back with us for the for the season finale episode recording, too, because Lara might not be able to <laughs> be, be able to join us. So but check that out. Uh, Adrenaline Cinema podcast. We'll go back to regular formatting after that i got movies underway that i want to cover like blood sport get back to the original idea of action adventure suspense all that cool stuff uh you could hear me there uh you could also hear me uh fantasy picks movie edition so look forward to a rebrand slash what to look forward to when we come back with that so rob Frank, Adam, and myself will be back, and it's uh, Rob's show, so he's going to 
figure out what he wants to do, change it all around, give it a new name possibly, and then we'll uh, keep you guys surprised what's going on. So there's that. But uh, if you would like to send any feedback, just like Anwin did, all you have to do is, uh, re- you know, send us an email. Go, You could just send it to panels to pixels one at gmail.com panels spelt out two spelt out to pixels and a number one at gmail.com and you can just type out your thoughts there and uh do that uh, or you could just record yourself we all have these cool nifty devices record yourself and send it as an attachment on an email and i could play it that's how uh Anwin had done it. <laughs> so uh, you could do that and send it to us directly. So that would be great. Uh, we can be found on Instagram at panels to pixels podcast, as well as Facebook. And so all you have to do is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. And then you'll see sometimes I'll post some things of what we're covering that next episode. So you see the image static image and what we're covering and just leave your comments in the comments below. Uh, or you could just do a uh, Facebook Messenger. I've gotten that before as well. So uh, we could also be found on YouTube. That's another way to be heard as well. All you have to do is search Panels to Pixels podcast, subscribe, ring the bell, and get notified when episodes come up. Uh, or we could be found on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Please, if you could do us a great favor, give us a five-star review. Uh, also, if you could actually comment in the in the ratings, it'd be awesome, too, because I like when I get to read everything. A five-star review is great, but I like to know exactly what people in detail. If there's something that you want us to change or if you have a little bit of a critique, it'd be great. Just let us know. We have only been doing this for almost nine years. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a while. But, uh, well, for that, that wraps up our coverage of Dark Matter Season 1, Episodes 7 and 8. We will be back next week for Episode 9, which is entitled... Entanglement. Entanglement. So, yep. Check that out. We'll let you know when that comes out. But other than that, that is our podcast. I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. I'm Steve. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. This was Panels to Pixels podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night.